Hi. Oh, there was a bit of a uh, uh, uh. hi. Welcome. Deb Scoper, Global Stressologist. Thank you for joining me here today. Ooh, ooh. Make sure everything's all tickety boo because <clears throat> this is one crazy time of the year. We all say this, we all do this, and all of a sudden, kapoof, our budget's gone. Our budget's gone. Our budget's gone. We're in chaos. There's so much going on around us. So as we enter this festive season, it can turn on us pretty darn quickly. So thanks for joining me, Debs Cooper, Global Stressologist. I'm here to do a three-part, quick three-part series about controlling uh -huh, the best we can, our Christmas chaos. So today we're talking about how to avoid blowing the budget. So I'd love to know if you're here live or uh, if you're here watching a replay, that would be fabulous. But grab your pen and paper, and I go, where's my pen? It's just out of reach. Grab your pen and paper because there's going to be some great little notes that I would love you to take note of, not just in head, but actually to take action on and share them because they're so simple. So how to avoid blowing the budget. Number one, number one, uh, rip off the Band-Aid. And we know that ripping off that Band-Aid when you've got hair or something and it's on your arm and it's slowly, whether you do it slowly or fast, you just have to rip it off. End of story, rip it off so we can actually deal with what we're dealing with underneath. So once you rip off the band-aid and go, I'm going in, this is where I'm going, you've made that commitment to yourself, you're honoring yourself for your situation you're in, rip it off. Then you're going to look at, and then you're going to look at, what do you have? And the key is, when I say what do you have, what money do you have? Let's have a look what that money is that is surplus to being here. So, once you've ripped the band-aid off, what do you have? You must be realistic. So, when you're looking at this, don't go, I'm going to assign $50 to each person. Now, my figures are just made up from the top of my head, so it's entirely up to you where you're at with whatever, but these are just off the top of my head. So, how much on each person? So, say you're going to go $50 on each person. Oh, do $50, but I've got a favorite child. So maybe I want to give them 70. So let's just be realistic. Is it 50 or is it 70? That's it. That's all. Be realistic with what you've got. When you look at per person, you must look at per person, but then you also want to look at how much on experiences. Because if you're going to go, okay, we're going to go do a day trip for this and we're going to, say, pick strawberries. Fabulous. In New Zealand, we can pick strawberries right now. Go do that. So there's petrol to go. Is there going to be an ice cream at the place? Is there going to be, like, what is actually that? Going to do an experience of picking strawberries sounds like great. Sounds free. We get to have strawberries at half price. But there's a whole other thing that goes with that. And that is the petrol. That's the energy. Are you going to be away from work? Are you going to take half a day off work? Are you going to, you know, you're going to have make sure you've got everything ready for the children. If the children don't want to eat strawberries and they're picking strawberries with you and you've got to have other food. Like, you've got to look at all these things. So, how much on the experiences? Look at how much you're going to spend on experiences. And how much on food? Because we tend to, well, maybe it could be me. I don't know. I'd like to think I probably, well, maybe not. Eat more during this festive season? No, I think we all pretty much do. We eat more if we've got them around. So how much are you going to spend on food? And over catering or under catering? That's it. This is this whole thing. How many people are coming? How much are they going to eat? Is it going to be a hot day? Is it going to be a cold day? What's going on? So if you're having a gathering, if you're having Christmas Day lunch or you're having Boxing Day at your house or you're having Christmas Eve or you're having a gathering or you're having your work do over and they're all coming or whatever, you must allocate a certain amount on food. So you can either ask for people to bring money, say, look, Estimate it's going to be $50 if we add everything up. We can wait till we get to the very end and we've kept all our receipts and we can look and then we can tally it all up. We can do that or we can just estimate $50. Or you can get them to bring things. So, okay, can you bring the pavlova? Mm, now, we're big for pavlovas in New Zealand, if you know what a pavlova is. Can you bring the trifle? Can you bring the cooked ham or whatever, whatever it is you're having for uh, Christmas? Can you bring the bread and bowl, bread, bread and bowl, bread and butter, whatever it is. So ask people to bring things that work for you and the dinner you're doing. But make sure it says zone of genius. Don't say to someone, I want you, because this has always happened to me at school gatherings, and say, oh, can you go bake this, this, and this? 
and you just literally feel my soul crawl up inside and go, how are you going to get out of this? And I go, I'm not a baker. So I can either buy something or I can do something else that's in my zone of genius. I was very quick to do that because I wasn't a baker. I, you have, you're, you're matching up against a million other people who are amazing bakers. I'm like, I'm not. I know how to make my couple of little things and that's it for me. So if you're having that gathering, ask for money or ask for things. But remember when you ask for things that it must be their zone of genius. Otherwise, you're just causing way more chaos, way more chaos. And sometimes people find it easier to hand over money than go and shop and do this and do all this for you. The other thing is, and this comes up quite a bit, so no matter what ranking you are in your family, no matter what ranking or religion you are in your family, I'm going to say to you this, it is not your responsibility to pay 100% for everything. It is not your responsibility. Just because your parents gave birth to you does not mean you have to pay every single thing for your parents for the rest of their life. You don't have to do this. You do not have to. And I say that from my heart because I see so many people go, oh, but my family are coming over and they've got 15 kids and they've got this. And so so we're now, what we were catering for was a four, four people lunch and we're going to have a nice little lunch. And now we've got 35 people coming. Oh, wow. And who's paying for that? Well, I am. But you're on a government subsidy. How are you going to pay? I don't know how I'm going to pay for that. Well, okay, let's just really get down and clear it. And that's what I'm talking about, ripping that Band-Aid off. Remember at the start I said that? You've got to make sure that you get realistic with what you have. If you can't cater for 35 people, don't have 35 people over or get them to bring their own stuff or money. You do not have to pay 100% for anything because you're hosting it. You're also hosting it as well. So think of those things. Think of those things and this thing is the greatest gift you've got right now when you speak from the heart so when you're working out your budget the other thing is and I call it whoopsies so how much are you going to spend on whoopsies we all have whoopsies so what are those whoopsies so uh, actually yesterday what happened is a car crashed into my car now right now my insurance I've got a $500 excess until we resolve the the issue so now I, I have to fork out $500 to get my car the process of the insurance claim going. Now, that's a bit stink, really, but I actually have that. How much, what is it? I have that buffer sitting there that I can do that because this is the stuff that tips you. If you had to suddenly fork out $500 for someone who hit your car, where are you going to find that if you don't have that buffer sitting there? So make sure you assign money for whoopsies. Now, Fingers, legs, eyes, and toes crossed that you're not going to get the whoopsies like I did yesterday. But hey, if you get them, you get them. So just make sure you've allocated money for your whoopsies. So when you're trying to avoid that blowing in the budget, because a whoopsie can throw you right out, completely throw you right out. So the other thing is, uh, you know, this thing I talked about, this thing, it's called communication. Communication is 100% key during this time and that's everything and this is to your partners to your family to your business partners to your business colleagues don't say to your staff I'm I'm going to be um, I'm not going to be available for three weeks well they probably want to know what you're doing for three weeks where are you going what are you doing let them have them a little bit of information use that mouth use that mouth say look I'm going to be in, in coverage and out of coverage or whatever it is so use that mouth communication is totally the key and I say that with business partners because if you go and buy all your staff a $50 gift, a $50 gift for something, you buy all your staff, and then your business partner goes, hey, I found these amazing things for $100, I thought I'd give them to the team. And you're right with that. I bought them. Oh, well, now you're looking at $150 per person. So, boom, blood, budget's already blown out. Let me turn my thing off. So, make sure you communicate with everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Then you're going to look at, now that you have that, you're going to look at what can you cut back on? What are those things you can cut back on? Now you may go, I can't cut back on anything. Can't cut back it. So that's okay, I can't cut back on anything. Totally, 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 that's it. But what you're buying, can you buy it somewhere else? So I looked at my role this Christmas, one of the roles I've taken on, is to decorate the table. And I'm going for cosmetically perfection. Now, Let's see how I go with that, because that's where I'm determined to go. So as you become more and more determined, sometimes a little bit of ego comes into play and you don't quite get it. But I'm going for that. Now, I found an amazing dinner set that I wanted to buy. And I wanted to buy. 
for three hundred and seventy dollars and I'm like oh I don't know if I can justify three hundred and seventy dollars for one day one day and I'm like well oh, I don't know I don't know I don't know so then I went okay maybe if I just tweak this little thing and just had this how much would this cost and I found a dinner set I got enough dinner sets that's cost me thirty dollars actually mum bought that I must pay mum back for that thirty dollars thanks mum so for thirty dollars so instead of three hundred and seventy dollars was the, the dinner set just the plates three hundred seventy dollars but now I've got them for thirty so I've instantly saved money just from that and that was my little bargain so when I say cut back you don't have to cut back on less potatoes or more potatoes or something like that you can cut back on other things as well so opportunity op, op shots opportunity shots they are great they have some amazing things in there uh, we've just bought some stuff for our Christmas table and it's like a percentage it's like 50 cents a piece for that compared to $12 in a shop you save so much money and when you get your head around hey I'm taking someone else's bargain I've got someone else's you know waste to be a bargain for me you get your head around that that's fantastic now there's some things I wouldn't buy secondhand nothing wrong with that and some things I would but you can actually get a bargain there's nothing wrong with buying secondhand sometimes it smells clean you can actually get some really good bargains when you go out and you take the opportunity now you may not have that chance so say to the mother-in-law the father-in-law is coming up hey if you're going to an op shop this is what I'm looking for if you're going to this, this is what I'm looking for if they happen to find it now we're coming up to that really crunch time uh, 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 of Christmas so you're coming down to that last real stress it's only a week and a bit to go so just be aware of that be aware of that be aware of yourself yourself so when you're avoiding how to avoid you blowing your budget also check in with your emotions check in with your emotions where are they wobbling on the scale are they extreme are they extreme that I can't even talk to anybody right now don't talk to me because I've got to wrap this or whatever it is if they're getting to that point remove yourself from the situation now this is a great one for Christmas is remove yourself from the situation means just go away for a walk walk around the block to say look I'm going to be back in five minutes maybe don't leave your kids at home and you and the rest of it when you're doing all that there's clearly have to be somebody left at home when you're going for a walk if you're leaving your house unattended but just do what feels right for you go stand in the garden go stand on the balcony go walk down to the bottom of the basement and walk back up wherever you are just get yourself remove yourself from that situation just to remind yourself I'm important I'm important in this just as much as everyone else is so once you've looked at this stuff when you're looking at blowing the budget you're going to keep you know I talked about keeping that budget keep a tally of that budget you're going to keep that tally daily if necessary now I went yesterday and uh, bought a couple of things but I didn't add up how much I had had and I was like oh my gosh last night how much did I spend when I did that uh, so that's my thing today is just go back and check what I actually spent on for yesterday so no I didn't walk my talk yesterday clearly that's probably why I got the car straight into me so keep that tally daily and if you need to put it in your notes I have mine in my notes everything I have in my notes so who's getting what roughly the price etc etc because it just helps you go oh and you're not storing it in the head the more you store things on your phone or on a piece of paper or anything like that you're freeing up all this craziness in your head which is allowing you to pull the weeds and plant more flowers and that's what we're doing we're getting rid of that and we're freeing this up for other more inspiring things I just would like to touch basic, uh, briefly on resentment. Oh, resentment is an icky place to be and it can bring up bitterness and it can bring up all sorts of emotion that can often come from nowhere. They just whoosh, explode and you know when resentment happens. So if you've got people coming over and you're not liking them, do something about it now. Talk to them beforehand or do whatever it is beforehand to get them to that place. Or wrap yourself in a cotton cotton wool that you're not going to be affected by them on that day and you've just got these tasks to do whatever it is know that resentment comes into play when uh, your work colleagues have time off and you're the one who's got to work yep you know this one so bitterness comes into play and when bitterness and resentment and ickiness and frustration comes in I call it your out of fear exchange and when you're out of fear exchange you've done something for somebody you think it's meaningful they haven't thought it's meaningful and you're just like oh my god they're just takers they take 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 and you get to that point of being really frustrated so 
when you get yourself out of fair exchange, go back and pivot back and have a look at it and go, okay, I've given this, they've given this, there's actually fair exchange. And it just grounds that crazy uh, craziness that goes into our head down and it calms our farm, as my cousin would say to me, calm your farm, calm your farm, and it just allows us to calm our farm, which is a great one just to go, yeah, actually you're right. So don't let that resentment and bitterness and mouth blow up especially when it comes to Christmas because they're all going to go, oh, remember the time that Deborah lost her stuff and she did this, this and this? You don't want to be having the room of that every Christmas because there are some people who hold on to that. You want to be able to let that stuff go. So watch yourself. Don't be that talk of the, don't be the talk of the family. Don't be that, don't be that one. Don't be that one. Sit back and watch that one. Nobody wants you to, that's my next tip, nobody wants you to go into debt for Christmas. For the festive season, for New Year's, nobody wants you to go into debt. So if you're spending $50 on someone and you don't have $50 to uh, buy your groceries next week or your power bill, do not, do not give that $50 to that person. Find something else for that person. Do not go, excuse me, do not go into debt for somebody else or yourself. Make sure you pay your power bills. Make sure you pay your food bills, your phone bills. Make sure you pay those bills. It's really important to keep them ticking over. Uh, just a couple of things. There's something called FOMO. F-O-M-O. -O, fear of missing out. It's just a story you have in your head. It is just a story. Let it go. If someone's having a gathering and you can't afford to go, so be it. Then don't go. Don't go and put yourself into that whole debt. So if someone's having a gathering and you're like, oh, it's going to cost me $500 to get there. Oh, I'd love to go. I'd love to go. Don't put yourself in debt for that $500 because you're going to be paying it off and you're going to get that. Fair exchange is going to happen out of fair exchange. You're going to get resentful. You're going to get bitter and you're going to get frustrated. So be aware of that. So watch that FOMO. The moment you see that FOMO come into your equation, the moment you see it, Stop, put your hand on your heart, and appreciate what you have around you right here, right now. I appreciate this. I appreciate being at home. I appreciate uh, having my space around me. I appreciate family being here, whatever it is. And then I appreciate not being able to go to that party. I appreciate saving that $50 or $500 or whatever it is in my pocket. I appreciate it. So be grateful for what you have and for what you don't have. And the last one I'm going to give you, the last tip I'm going to give you today, the last tip, last tip, last tip of how to avoid blowing the budget is this thing here is be gentle on yourself and those around you. Be gentle on yourself. We are all such uh, little bundles of stress right now. I can see it everywhere we go. Be gentle on yourself. Love what you've done. Love what you haven't done. Love those around you. Love those not around you. And just appreciate what's going on for you because you are a beautiful person. I guarantee you are. I guarantee you are. So remember that. You are a lovely person who can get through this Christmas festive season without going into brokenness. Without going into brokenness. And if you have any questions, guess who else is here for you? Me. Reach out. Reach out. I'm working over the Christmas period. Why? Because I love it. I've got my clients. I'm doing what I do best. Consulting. I'm doing what I do best. I'm going to be sitting by the pool. Consulting. I'm going to be sitting in my office. Consulting. Whatever it is, I'm going to be doing it. So please don't have any problem in reaching out because I am here for you. Now, if you liked this, because I know you did. I know you got some things out of today. I know you frantically tried to quickly write on how to avoid blowing the budget. So if you like this today, the next step is to share this. The next step is to share this with somebody you care about. If you don't want to have those conversations, send this to a family member. Say, how are we thinking about our budget for Christmas? What do you think about what, what Debs has said? Share it with those people. Step one, you've got to rip off the band-aid first. Step one, you've got to be ripping off that band-aid and be accountable to the situation you're in. So that's me, Debs Cooper, Global Stressologist, signing off. I want to thank you for joining me today. I will see you next week with part two of the old uh, Christmas chaos. Thanks very much for joining. See you next time.